Continuing our ongoing gem series, today we're turning the spotlight onto the Master of Ceremonies of Fusions. We'll be covering her personality, history, powers, and as always, the real life gem and cultural influences, and ask if they had any impact on the character's creation. I'm Chris Carr, and today I want to talk to you about Sardonyx from Steven Universe. Before we start talking about this magician looking fusion, I want to give a shout out to all of our patrons on Patreon. Thanks to these heroes, I get to keep watching Steven Universe on repeat, and our studio gets to keep the lights on. If you want to pitch in, head on over to our Patreon page and see if a donation tier works for you. We'll thank you with shout out, swag, and behind the scenes peeks. On to Sardonyx! Look at this gal! Rocking the aesthetic of Zatanna and the personality of an MC, Sardonyx comes into fruition when Crystal Gems Pearl and Garnet fuse. She rocks an onigiri looking haircut, has forearms, and her torso and legs resemble garnets while she takes on Pearl's nose and her gemstones appear in the same places as her components. Storyboard artist Joe Johnston also took inspiration from himself when it came to designing Sardonyx, giving her a gap between her front teeth, just like him. Creator Rebecca Sugar suggested that Johnston use Korean singer Soon Mi's choreography for inspiration for Garnet and Pearl fusing. In fact, he ended up using her track Full Moon in these preliminary animations. Sardonyx's personality is a combination of Garnet and Pearl. She acts over the top and theatrical while still appearing intelligent. She acts more like a late night host than your typical crystal gem, and like Sunstone, has a tendency to break the fourth wall, as shown in Know Your Fusion, when she directly references Cartoon Network, merchandising keeping her afloat, and whether or not they'll need to pay Nicki Minaj royalties if she doesn't actually appear in an episode. You like that little man? Cause everybody loves a callback. <laughs> She's not actually in this episode. Do we still have to pay her? Yes? Fair enough. This fusion thinks extremely highly of herself and can be dismissive of others' feelings. She'd be downright rude to Amethyst, which probably stems from Pearl's issues with her. Are you gonna smash stuff with your Warhammer? Hmm, smash is the word one would use to describe what someone else might do. The fusion's over-the-top personality may even be inspired by the word sardonic, which means disdainfully or ironically humorous. I think this play on the gem's name definitely fits, especially given the tropey laugh she's given. Sardonic seems to have a noble woman laugh, the stereotyped laugh often used in anime where a refined woman will say ho 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 rather than actually laugh. <laughs> it's typically a trait of stuck-up women, and characters usually utilize this laugh in moments of arrogance or while humiliating their rivals. Oh, what's really great is on TV tropes, if you look up noble woman laugh, it says, the character who does this is usually a bitch. I thought that was a great little fun fact. <laughs> Stop! But really, please. While Sardonic seems to be a more reasonable fusion than Sugalite in that she doesn't wish to remain a fusion and will defuse easily, Pearl makes this pairing problematic. She loves how she feels so much when she fuses with Garnet that she actually begins manufacturing reasons to fuse. In the episode Cry for Help, Pearl and Garnet fuse to take down the communication hub that Peridot has fixed. Pearl has so much fun being fused to Sardonyx that she herself rebuilds the tower over and over again just so they can form to disable it. Pearl is caught, she apologizes to Garnet and explains how fun it is to be sardonyx with her, but Garnet won't hear it. Garnet accuses Pearl of distracting the crystal gems with her own selfish needs. It's just so much fun being sardonyx with you. <sighs> if we look at Pearl, not only as someone who feels lost without their romantic partner, but as someone whose entire life is about being of service and being a follower, it makes sense that she feels completed by others. Pearl obviously finds Garnet to be cool and confident and powerful, and wants to feel that way herself. Pearl thrives off of being needed and appreciated, so she wants to have these small victories and powerful moments with Garnet. You tricked me. No, 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 we just needed a reason to fuse. I just wanted to share a few more victories with you. That being said, fusion is based on trust and consent. Pearl clearly abused Garnet's trust and gained consent under false pretenses. And the timing of this could not be worse. Just a few episodes prior in Keeping It Together, the gems discovered the gem shard experiment where shards were forced to fuse and were given no choice in the matter. They were forced together. They were forced to fuse. This is wrong. I I'm sorry. Fusion is an intimate experience, whether romantic, platonic, or as we'll see later, familial, and is a subject that is incredibly personal to Garnet. So seeing that monstrous experiment and then realizing that Pearl was manipulating her in order to fuse is like further exposing an already raw nerve in Garnet. Pearl proved to be selfish and untrustworthy, meaning that she would need to gain Garnet's trust back if she ever wanted to fuse with her again. 
Garnet in turn comes to understand that Pearl did this mostly due to her traumatic socialization as a Pearl, and is able to help her friend feel more secure about herself and her own self-worth. Sardonyx is a fantastic example of the trust that should exist within friendships, and how that trust needs to be ongoing and consistently earned. You control your destiny, not me, not Rose, not Steven, but you must choose to be strong so we can move forward, so I can trust you again. Sardonyx possesses your standard set of gem abilities, such as weapon summoning, enhanced durability and speed, and the ability to fuse. She's graceful and precise, but also moves through a fight playfully, often toying with both her opponent and the audience. She looks before she leaps and thinks before she acts, acting tactfully in battle. Her weapon is a combination of Garnet's Gauntlets and Pearl's Spear. The two come together to form a Warhammer, which she wields methodically. Using precise, measured strikes, just like we see on the communication tower, she smashes things with elegance. But yes, occasionally, I am known to smash. She'll inflict optimum damage with the least amount of effort. She can also spin the top part of her hammer so that it acts like a drill. Sardonyx is like an incredibly articulate action figure in that she can fully spin segmented parts of her body. She appears to also have an enhanced ability to calculate structural integrity, a trait that probably comes from Garnet, or specifically Sapphire's future vision, although it could come from the nice and accurate Pearl. Fans have made some comparisons between Sardonyx and the Platinum Games character Bayonetta. Rebecca Sugar has said in the Steven Universe podcast that character inspo has been taken from video games before, and I've gotta say, the fans aren't totally off base with this link. Both characters pose dramatically in front of the moon prior to attacking, they're both graceful, yet incredibly strong. They're poised and confident, and they both use their hammer weapons in similar ways. Plus, Sardonyx's upbeat theme is a lot like the Bayonetta series soundtrack. Sardonyx the actual gemstone is a combination of alternating layers of Sard and Onyx, hence the name. Sard ranges from dark orange to red to almost black, whereas Onyx is almost always black. This crypto-crystalline quartz combo can be colored with iron and carbon inclusions, giving it its brown and black coloring. In Greek, sard means reddish brown, and onyx means veined gem. Which, like, that's such a gross way to describe jewelry. Would you like this veined gem necklace? Ugh. The best example of sardonyx, which display sharp contrast between layers, are found in India. Other deposits include Brazil, Germany, Czechoslovakia, Madagascar, Uruguay, and the United States. Sardonyx was a very popular gemstone in ancient times, not only because it was attractive, but because it was widely available. Unlike rare gemstones that could only be bought with the wealth of royalty and nobility, sardonyx could be obtained by everyday people. For example, sardonyx was used in ancient Roman jewelry. Women would wear these sardonyx pieces with cameos of Venus in hopes of harnessing the power of the love goddess, and it was common for soldiers to wear sardonyx rings carved with images of Mars, the god of war, to protect them. Sardonyx was also a popular stone for seals and signet rings that were used to imprint wax emblems on official Roman documents since hot wax couldn't stick to the stone. Now, this sense of attractiveness, protection, power, and regality seemed to really play into the character. During the Renaissance, sardonyx was believed to gift whomever wore the stone with eloquence, and was regarded with great value by public speakers. Now, this definitely fits in with our talk show hostess Gem's ability to weave words. Always running around kindergartens and causing trouble. Boy, that didn't quite work out for her. Guess she should go back to preschool. Am I right, folks? <laughs> Sardonyx has been used as a stone of strength and is associated with courage, happiness, and clear communication. It's said to bring lasting happiness and stability to marriage and partnerships. Now, this is a bit rocky in the show, obviously. Uh, Garnet and Pearl are able to grow a better relationship based on mutual trust thanks to honesty and clear communication, which allows them to form a stable partnership, or in this case, stable fusion. Sardonyx is also said to enhance willpower, vitality, confidence, integrity, optimism, and stamina. Now, all of these traits make sense, not only when we think of Sardonyx the character's personality and behavior, but also how Pearl feels when she's fused with Garnet. For once, we have a stone that's traits really line up with the character and the narrative journey they're on. The more I learned about the stone, the more I saw in common with the fusion. So I'd say Sugar and Co. did their homework on this one and really allowed the traits of the stone to shine in the portrayal of the gem. But that's just me. Do you think these attributes match up with the Mr. Mistopheles of the Crystal Gems? Just remember, everybody, if you ever have need of the lovely Sardonyx, let Pearl and Garnet know. I'll be there in a flash. Literally. What stands out to you about this fusion? Do you love her? Do you hate her? What'd I miss? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks again to everyone on Patreon, TeePublic, and all of you Steven Universe fans. For more videos, click to the left. Thanks for watching.
See you, Space Cowboy.